Hier ist er, Reto Schneider. Good morning. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Can you go back? Okay. Would you would you help this man? I mean, say you had to enter this door. Would you would you ask him? Is is everything okay? Can I help you? Uh, this was the question a group of theology students at Stanford University were uh, confronted with on December 14, 1970. One by one, by one they were sent to, uh, to this door under the false uh, pretense that they should give a talk inside the building. Not just any talk, uh, the subject of their speech was the biblical story of the Good Samaritan. You remember, uh, on the way from Jerusalem to Jericho, a man fell among robbers. A priest came by without helping him. A Levite came by without helping him. Only the Samaritan, who came third, helped. One, one question uh, the researchers who uh, designed these experiments wanted to answer was, does the fact that someone just reflected on this uh, story change his... Uh, helping behavior? And uh, the answer, surprisingly or not, is no. On average, the students who prepared a talk about the Good Samaritan did not help more often than the control group who uh, had to prepare a completely different subject. As a matter of fact, some of the students who uh, went to talk about the cold reaction of the priest literally stepped over uh, this victim to give the talk. They didn't know that it was only an actor. I, I like this. I uh, admit to, to that. Not necessarily the result, but uh, the experiment. It's so original. Uh, the only one I found inspired directly by the Bible. Uh, for several years already, I'm uh, collecting original literature about weird experiments. Uh, and actually, I consider myself being one of the leading experts uh, on the field. Not because I'm extremely knowledgeable, but probably because I'm the only one. <laughs> I do have a collection of about 500 to 1,000 original papers on weird experiments. Uh, I write a column about weird experiments. Uh, Peter told you that, and I recently published uh, Das Buch der Verrückten Experimente, a, a collection of stories about weird experiments from the 1300s uh, to today. Okay, so what are you interested in most? Maybe this question. How often during intercourse is pubic hair transferred between men and women? <laughs> now the the answer, 17.3% of the time. At least that was the result of a 1998 study with the title, Frequency of Public Hair Transfer During Intercourse. <laughs> or uh, are you rather interested in, in animals, small animals maybe? Does your uh, conscience haunt you every night when you think of all the poor spiders you pulled legs from. Then the result of a 1952 study will comfort you. After the researchers ex extracted two legs from a number of spiders, they found out a spider can build its web with only six legs. <laughs> Talking about spiders, what, what kind of a web does a drugged spider build? That was tried out in 1948. The result, unfortunately, is not very well suited for uh, drug prevention programs. Here is the web of a spider under the influence of uh, marijuana. <laughs> it's not that bad, actually. <laughs> and uh, here is the web under the influence of caffeine. 
<laughs> Think of that in the intermission. <laughs> or are you rather into uh, spiritual stuff? How much does the soul weigh? At the turn of the last century, a doctor in Massachusetts tried to answer this question. He placed dying patients on a very precise scale and observed if the weight diminishes after death. The difference, obviously, must be the weight of the soul. The experiment was a front page news at the time. As you can see here, this is an article from the Washington Post. Uh, the result, 21 grams, entered popular culture. Here, the poster of the 2003 feature movie, 21 Grams, starring Sean Penn and Naomi Watts. If you are uh, religiously inclined, you may also wonder what happens if you bring together three men who all believe they're Jesus. This was done in 1959, <laughs> when the American psychologist Milton Rockage arranged in a psychiatric hospital for such a situation. First, the free men argued a lot, but soon they were living peacefully together, avoiding the subject of their identity. <laughs> when Rockage asked one of them what he thinks about the other two who were saying that they're Jesus, he said, you know, they are not. They are living in a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> Is this talk confusing? Uh, maybe I should stay with... Uh, one subject instead of jumping around. Uh, let's talk about sex. Uh, a pioneer in the field of sex experiments was uh, this man, uh, J.B. Watson. He was a leading psychologist in the beginning of the last century. And as you can see from the picture, his, his problem was he was just too good looking. He was uh, actually elected the most handsome faculty member at Johns Hopkins University in 1919. Around this time, he started his uh, sex experiments. And uh, unselfishly, he made himself available as a research <laughs> subject. He wired his body and the body of a woman to measuring devices, and then they had sex. The problem was that this woman was not his wife, but 19-year-old student, uh, Rosalind Reiner. His wife found out why her husband was working long hours, filed for divorce, and destroyed all data. <laughs> yeah. She had just no sense for science. I mean. Ten years later, other researchers approached the subject. Ernst Boas and Ernst Goldschmidt invented a cardiotachometer, a device that could measure the heartbeat during a physical activity. Their measurements showed that an orgasm is a most exhausting activity with an average pulse rate of 148 beats per minute. Boas and Goldschmidt do not talk how exactly the measurement was done. They only show this curve. <laughs> with, uh, with the rather dry description, it shows four peaks of heart rate for the woman, each peak representing an orgasm. They in, in their book, they do not elaborate on the quite remarkable fact that the woman in question experienced between 11.25 and 11.45, that's 20 minutes, four orgasms. Only later was a researcher commenting on it, he attributed the feat to the developed technique of the man. <laughs> uh, in 1950, two uh, German researchers were measuring the pulse rate of a woman who could produce orgasms by the minute through fantasizing alone. They had big problems publishing their study. The journal only agreed to the publication after critical parts of the experiment uh, were described in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> 